and welcome to the nightclub inside the Torre Cabrada Hotel, just round the corner from Torre Molinas on Spain's Costa del Sol. Hello, good evening to you. For the first time ever, Britain could have two reigning world middleweight champions. In superb style at the PAC National Exhibition Centre last weekend, Chris Eubank sees his chance, and Chris and his fiancée Karen are here at ringside tonight. A very different setting, but still it's the biggest prize of all, waiting for Harold Graham, the stylish British champion. Now, if you're a bit confused about the overall world middleweight picture, let me just refresh your memories. Michael, second to none, he's the International Boxing Federation, the IBF champion at 11-6. Mike McCallum, who outpointed Graham last year, he's the WBA champ, the World Boxing Association. Chris Eubank has taken the World Boxing Organization, the WBO title, from Nigel Benn. Tonight's fight is for the vacant World Boxing Council. Julian Jackson stands between Graham and Glory. Bomber Graham, the 31-year-old Sheffield Southpaw, has only lost twice on split decisions to world champions. He's a great technician, but knows he must produce the goods tonight to leapfrog into the big time and the big money. This fight tonight is very, very important to me, really. It's one of the fights which have been a championship, which have been eluding me, the world championship. I've got all the others, the British European Commonwealth, now I want the world championship, so it is very important for me uh, for one of my goals, which I'm uh, aiming for, to, uh, to lift the World Championship tonight. Julian Jackson has only been beaten by the brilliant McCallum. He was a fearsome puncher at light middleweight. Now, the board won't allow him to fight in Britain after an eye operation. Jackson insists there's no problem. He's expecting a great fight tonight. Oh, man, it's, it's going to be action from the, the round one, you know, and... Um, how Graham will definitely be on the bike, I know that. And um, any mistake made by him, I will definitely be there to take the uh, opportunity. And um, I'm expecting a, a beautiful fight. I'm expecting a, a technical fight. And uh, it's going to be uh, one of the best fights Europe have ever seen. <laughs> Where well, we're all set here waiting for the arrival of the two fighters. It's a very different setting to the NEC. Less than a thousand people inside this uh, casino hotel on the Costa del Sol. Harold Graham, for my money, really deserves a world title. He served his time in this boxing trade over 300 rounds. Mentor, here comes the bomber, Harold Graham. Union Jacks inside the ring and quite a lot of support has come from Sheffield. He'll carry most support here in Spain tonight. Harold Bomber he hasn't come his way yet. And uh, at 30, well, time's running out for him as well. OK, let's pop over the balcony from my position and join your big fight commentators at ringside. Jim Watt, and first of all, let's say a very good evening to Reg Guttridge. Well, hello then, and draw up a very cosy ringside seat with us here in the, this rather remarkable hotel and site for a championship of the world. They had problems putting it on, couldn't go on in Britain, so uh, it's come here with the, the Matchroom Barry Home promotions. And uh, as Jim Rosenthal was saying, that, uh, there's been no bad mouth in between the boxers, and that's always a pleasure because they're both very good technicians. I wouldn't want to say compare this with the, the sort of rough and tumble and excitement that we had uh, only a week ago with Ben and Eubank because these are entirely different type of boxes. So over to uh, the MC, Nat Basso. Champion of Europe from Sheffield in England, Harold Bonner. Your officials appointed by the WBC, your judges are from California, USA, Rudy Ortega, from Mexico, Jose Gwen Guyana, from New Jersey, USA, Trump Calabanic, and your referee from New Jersey, USA, Joe Cortez. The WB sponsor is Ruben Martinez of Spain. And your representative for the British Boxing Board of Control is the General Secretary, Mr. John Morris. And your team timekeeper is Francisco Morales of Spain. So the rundown then from uh, Joe Cortez. 
comes from New Jersey. The referee he handled the Jim McDonnell and Azuma Nelson contest, among many others. He's done a couple of Tyson fights, I remember. So a friendly good luck to both of you then from referee Cortez. And now he's been in a melting pot plenty of times now, Harold Graham, and at uh, 31, it's got to be perhaps his last fling. But he's the most experienced of the active uh, British boxers at championship level. He's fought three 15 rounders in the old days, more than any, any other active British boxer. But this is 12 for the opening round. Well, Jackson there, uh, obviously in the gold and the southpaw style of uh, Graham in the fancy pants. I've seen Jackson a couple of times and I can tell you he is a really good puncher, solid puncher. Not the greatest of names in the middleweight division, but he could, could easily be because he gets people duck him a little bit and uh, moving up from the light middleweight to the full middleweight division. And of course the championship is vacant. So they're splitting the, the matchroom purse right down the middle, which in dollars came to $223,000. I, I make that about 56,000 pounds each. Well, it's a more aggressive start from Graham Regent than we expected, and obviously more aggressive than uh, Jackson expected. So Graham's uh, standing his ground, he's pushing Jackson back, Jackson with, with uh, the more punching power, so good tactics in the first round from Graham. It's going to be very much of a chess match contest, Jim, this one, isn't it? Because they're both correct boxes. Yeah, well, although Graham is uh, known as a counter-puncher, he has a good style. He actually can come forward, draw leads and counter-punch, although he's coming forward. And that's how he started the first round here. He's standing his ground, edging forward, trying to draw leads from Jackson. Well, I don't know if there's anything seriously wrong with his eyesight, but there was with that punch. Mile away there, Jackson. Sort of got mad with himself there, Jim, for missing, didn't he, Jackson? And threw a few wild punches afterwards. Yeah, well, I think he's going to have to get used to that because, uh, as we very well know, Graham is the hardest man in the business to catch with clean shots. If you catch him with one, almost impossible to, to double up on it. Oh, yes, he's definitely a ring Houdini, isn't he, uh, Graham? Remember, he lost a... A split verdict to Mike McCallum, who's one of the best ring generals around, actually, and his last championship bid in London, and would have won it, but for being a uh, point taken away for cautioning. This is good stuff from Graham uh, th this early. He's standing his ground. He's not allowing Jackson to push him back and get leverage into his own punching. This uh, good start, very accurate with it. He's not putting a lot of power into his punches, but accurate and keeping his man confused. The art of this game is to hit without being hit, and he's good at that, Graham. So the end of the first, and a good start by the British champion. So uh, only two losses when you think of it. It's quite, quite an amazing uh, record, that, and both of them were world champions. Mike McCullum and Sambu Kalambay. He became world champion uh, against Kalambay. And over to Jackson's corner then. And he's only lost the one, remember. That's, uh, that's really going some, isn't it? And uh, he gave up the light middleweight uh, championship, defended it twice. And his last fight was back in uh, June. That was his first at the middleweight, 11 stone, 6 division. And both boxers are exactly 11 stone, 6. Segundo fuera. So coming out early for play here, round two. A bit of a frustrating touch about Jackson there, Jim. I'm a bit surprised. Ja Jackson was a little bit slow off the mark in the first round. Uh, he, he didn't try. I mean, maybe maybe this is the way he does business. Maybe he just uh, tries to pot shot in the first round, but he didn't do a lot of work. 
already he seems to be trying to liven up he's been caught and he's blinking his eye already I wonder if he's got eye damage already well that's that's a really bad sign for Jackson there he, he's made it he's closing it to him as though he's caught it with a thumb but that really shouldn't happen because these glove uh, thumbs are attached Well, this is excellent news from Graham. Already, Jackson's complaining. He's backing off out here. He's just really covering up. He's not really throwing anything. And I don't think he's trying to sucker Graham forward. I think he has trouble with that left eye. He came, obviously, with ophthalmologist clearances on specialists of his eyesight, and the, the detached retina had healed properly. So that possibly could have happened to him even without already having a high problem because there's a swelling there as well, isn't there? Yeah, there's a little less swelling just in the soft tissue uh, immediately below the eye. It's maybe just the, the edge of the glove that's caught in there. But the Graham wants to be nice and careful as he usually is. Doesn't want to run onto anything here. Oh, that's, uh, that's really making him, uh, if you'll forgive the expression, a mug, isn't it there, Jackson? He fell right across the ring. His only loss was again to Mike McCullum, who both of them have now beaten, has beaten both of them. Well, they're uh, having trouble with the left eye against uh, the southpaw jab of Earl Graham Red. You don't have your troubles to seek. And there's no three knockdown rule here. You may have seen in other contests if a man goes down three times in one round, stop. It doesn't. It's not an effect here. And this is the most prestigious, I think, of the World Championships, the World Boxing Council, which is partly formed by Britain's Boxing Board of Control. You see Jackson has switched round, Reg. He's standing southpaw now. I don't know if that's because of the eye. Maybe he reckons he can see better out the, the right eye, but that wouldn't do his technique a lot of good. No, he really does have a problem there, Jackson, so early in the contest. It takes a good, correct, sharp puncher, doesn't it, Jim, uh, to catch Graham at the best, and if he's already under handicap, Jackson. Yes, yeah, so even when you catch Graham, he's pulling away from the punch and taking some of the sting. An excellent start in this contest for Earl Graham. Joe Cortez picking up the judges, and there it is then. And they'll need that to little end swell that's that trying to work that away there uh, the soft tissue as Jim Watt said uh, and there it is it's uh, quite a nasty start for him they drop that in the ice bucket and uh, hold it on there and apply a lot of pressure but, but it looks as though the eye itself was hurt there Jim doesn't not just the swelling you know you have to remember what, what it does to his mind he knows he had trouble with his eye and then that happens so psych psychologically it was a big dip so you can see as it comes here, he starts blinking and really looked a little bit worried about what was going on there. Lost all his rhythm. Again, they've got to wait for the bell. There's a little bit of confusion with the Spanish timekeeper, I suspect. So third round. And really, Jim, it's almost like one of Graham's calculated workouts at the moment he's not extending himself at all yep and the, the right jab's working well reg he, he does pull his head up high that's still like a danger against this fellow but he's always done that reg he's never been stopped or knocked out yet so who might criticize but now and again he does put his chin in dangerous territory in the previous fight today saw jackson he didn't box in the southpaw stand so i don't know whether he was a natural southpaw and then converted I think he switched round because of the eye rage. I think maybe he reckons he, his vision will be better looking out of his right eye. But uh, if he's not a natural southpaw, then he's going to have a lot of trouble catching this man, Graham. <laughs> so again, Graham head in the wrong position there, but he managed to block the punch. He really does take some chances of uh, pulling his chin back up so high. Oh, look at that one. He 
pulled him under that punch all right, didn't he? As he walked under it, I should say, there was a good shot by Graham. Comes from the Don King promotional camp, managed there by his son, Carl King, who's here. And uh, they rated Jackson very highly and fancied his luck here. They were very confident coming into the fight. It's a, a different story now. Well, Graham's confidence really must be, be bulging now, Reg. His things are going well for him. He's just shaking Jackson with a nice little uh, counter punch. Everything going smoothly. He just wants to carry on, be nice and careful. Well, he's certainly had to wait a long time, and, uh, well, he's still got a while to go yet in this uh, fight, of course. I think he's just about completed 304 rounds now with this round in his pro career. He went 10 years without losing a decision from amateurs. Jimmy Harrington, I think it was, back in 77, and then Callum Bay in 87. That's quite a record. He should have had uh, a championship by now. He's jockeying around with British and European as he wants, Graham. They seem to have got some of that swelling down, Jim. Well, what's your opinion there? Well, uh, it certainly hasn't got any worse, uh, thankfully, for, for Jackson's case. I don't know if they've actually got the swelling down, but the main thing is it hasn't worsened. But I don't know how he feels uh, leading with this uh, right hand of his. And have a look at this replay now again there. See, that was there. He really was off balance and good. He was definitely hurt with that shot. clean as a whistle he looks doesn't he nothing no problem there and uh, referee Joe Cortez has actually gone over to uh, have a look at Jackson as the referee looking in and he can call a doctor for a second opinion if he wants to take time off he's saying uh, to the timekeeper uh, yes and looks like he's taking the doctor call the doctor up for an opinion but the referee makes the final choice. <laughs> Round four. Oh, that was uh, one of the grounds that was shoved there, a bit obvious. It's 14 touch though. Well, Jackson back to orthodox again, Reggie. Maybe he means business. Maybe he's going to really have a go in this round. Uh, He's maybe thinking that time is really running out with that eye injury. I don't know what the doctor has said to him. See, switching stance again, Jim. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's back to his old style of the, the orthodox lead. He maybe reckons he's going to have to throw everything into attack and try and get Graham out of there. With that eye injury, the doctor looking at it in between rounds is obviously added to his concern. keeping him off balance all the time, Reg. He's not getting any power into his punches. He can't put punches together. Graham's there, then he's off. He's peppering him with little southpaw leads. Good boxing from Graham. After convincing, there have been times I've seen Graham and he's disappointed me a bit, but he's as sharp as a tack for this one, isn't he? Yeah, but and the good thing tonight, Reg, he hasn't got on his bike. He hasn't been running around the ring, keeping out of trouble. He's been standing right in front of Jackson, actually backing him up for most of the time. And this is good stuff here. He's pinning Jackson, drawing little leads and thumping home counter punches. <laughs> Using every inch. Oh, what a punch! I can't believe that. Never been stopped in his career. And he's out to the world. 
winning every round there, Harold Graham. Jim, have you ever seen such a turnaround? I did say at the start of the show, by the way, that I'd see, I knew he was a good puncher. But as the contest went on, I thought there was no chance of him catching Graham. Well, Reg, as we said earlier, Graham, he puts his chin in places. Your chin should not be. He did it once too often, and Jackson caught with that one. All through the fight, he just had his chin a whisker away from Jackson's counter punches. But that was a perfect punch. And really, before he hit the floor, he was completely out. No hope of beating the count. And Jackson really pulled that one out of the fire. He was in trouble himself. Well behind in points. But at a long last, day, Graham's lack of a tight defence has let him down. Again, at top level, Reg. Well, it's... I know he was a quality fighter, but he, wa he just didn't know how to catch up with Graham. But when he did, what a payoff punch that is. And certainly, with a, with obviously an impaired vision, whatever happens. But he got to him in the end there, Jackson. And uh, leaving Graham in the ring, turned him on his side. It's a normal procedure. But as he hit the deck, Jim, I mean, he was out long before he hit the canvas. Yeah, well, I was impressed the way... The canvas, which uh, obviously has a rubber padding underneath and needs it. Bobby Lewis his head up a bit like a weather vane there, and uh, bang, I mean, he, he just collapsed. See, it's an amazing point. But for quite a while tonight, you must have thought you wouldn't get your hands on that belt. Well, I had no um, doubt in my mind. Harold Graham caught me some good punch, but I realized that the punches weren't as, I, um, as effective as I thought they would have been. You know, he stunned me a few times, but I had my faculties together. And I was just waiting for that opportunity when I landed my shot. You know, he moved pretty well, and believe me, he, he surprised me when he stood in the middle of the ring. I expected him to move, so he threw me off, you know, and it took me a while to really get my, my things together. But we weren't just viewing the fight through British eyes. I would think most people around ringside here would have you three rounds down when you landed that vital punch. Oh, definitely. I knew I was behind, you know, I knew, but I kept on him. I kept the pressure on him, and I knew yeah. sometime in the, in the ring or in the fight I would have got my shot off. Well, we all wondered if you still had the power as a middleweight, and I think if you look down here now, you'll, you'll be able to see um, that uh, you pack a fair old dig, Julian. No one's ever done that to him before. I knew that. Woo, that was a beauty. I must say, I was timing him. I was timing him while I was going back in the corner, and I kept my eyes on him until he made that drop to throw his left hook to deliver his punch, and he was open, and I threw the, left, the right hook and caught him flush on the chin. You turned the fight upside down, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I know he was very, very confident, you know. He felt that he had everything in control, but I knew what I had to do in order to get my punch off. Did you feel you had to do it uh, very, very quickly with a view to that, to the way that I realized I was that I had to put the pressure on him because my eye was closing pretty, pretty fast, and I knew I got to, I had to get him before, you know, it got in the later rounds because I probably might have, wouldn't have been able to see through his eye, you know. But well, thank God, and um, I give him all the glory and all the praise in the world. Well, for he is king, and he is lord of lords. Well, I can't yes. compete with that, but uh, you said you've got to feed your wife and five kids back home, didn't you? Yes, yes, and I dedicate this to the lord and savior of my life and to my baby girl, Joy, Sister Joy. I'm coming home with the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. You've done it. Well done. Let's, let's just bring Barry Hearn in here. Barry. Uh, so the